welcome to the first of what we hope to be a number of tutorials about QML3D. It's important to remember that QML3D is still under development, so what you see in this tutorial may have changed considerably by the time QML3D is officially released. That being said, however, this tutorial should give you some idea of the capabilities of QML3D as they currently stand, and give you a grounding in QML3D development as newer versions become available. So now I've done the boring introduction part, let's actually get down to writing some QML code. If you've already dabbled in QML, a lot of what I'm doing will be familiar to you. QML3D files also import headers, for example the Qt47 import. But in addition to that, we add the Labs 3D 1.0. This contains all of the 3D information we'll need. Now if you're watching this tutorial, I'm sure you're fairly familiar with 3D applications as it stands. However, for the newcomers, a 3D application basically needs three things. First up, we need somewhere to actually draw stuff. In QML3D, this is specified as a viewport. A viewport can be the actual window itself, or it can be an area of the window in which we're drawing 3D content. Secondly, we need a camera position. The camera position specifies what angle we're looking at the world from, where we're actually looking in 3D space. In QML3D, we have an actual camera object. Here I'm setting the camera's eye position. This will give me a view from slightly above. The final thing we need for a 3D scene is an actual 3D object. And I'll also assign the mesh property of the item 3D. Mesh object is an actual thing which supports a variety of file formats, 3DS files, OBJ files, and Bezier patches. It's a monkey. It's flat shaded, but not very exciting. Though you can see that I can already manipulate it in 3D space, which is quite useful. So let's do a little bit more. So here I'm setting the for smooth parameter and I'm also going to assign a few more variables to this. We'll set a different scale and give the monkey a particular position as you can see here. Also move the camera slightly and most interestingly we'll apply an effect. In this case the effect object I'm going to specify is the material for the monkey. We actually create a material object and assign some properties for that object. In this case, the ambient colors and the specular colors for the object. So just specify that in the standard kind of format. And I'll also assign the shininess of this particular material to 200. That's a value from 0 to 255. So this is quite a shiny object. Let's see what that looks like. That's much cooler. It's a shiny monkey idol, the kind of thing that Indiana Jones would love to have on his mantelpiece. So having added one object, let's add another just for fun. We'll add a sign at an ID, this time penguin, and once again set the mesh property to a mesh object, this time a file called penguin.3ds. No prizes for guessing what that is. Oh my god, a monkey has vomited out a giant penguin. This is part of the problem with using third-party models. Very often they're too large, on the wrong axis, off-center, any number of problems. And what we have to do is actually correct those at the code level. Now this is a problem which is being worked on in QML3D, but for the moment I can demonstrate a simple solution by rescaling it and applying a transform. And we apply rotation 3D. We give an angle, and we apply it to a particular axis. Again, we do the same thing, this time with a different axis. And now the penguin should be in the correct position. Lo and behold, our tiny penguin is now worshipping a giant golden monkey idol. Quite inspiring, really. Let's make it a bit more exciting. QML3D uses exactly the same kind of animations as QML. So here I'm seeing a sequential animation, setting it to be running, and it's a number animation. And what we're going to be animating with this particular one is the penguin tilt, which, as you saw from earlier, is a rotation 3D. So we'll set it to go to negative 45 degrees. 
that's an easing curve there. Just tells you how fast the animation accelerates and decelerates. Gives you an idea of what it's going to look like when it actually animates. And we'll apply another animation, this time directly onto a property of the item itself. So on the Y property there of the parent item. And again, a number animation. Slightly shorter this time. And the same easing curve. It's a dancing penguin. So now our little penguin worshipper is jumping up and down and dancing. What he really needs, though, is some friends. If I wanted to do that normally, I'd have to cut and paste this entire section time and time and time again, which can get tiresome. So what we can do instead is create a new file, grab the imports there, take that entire item 3D, drop it in there like so, and call it penguin.qml. Now it has to start with a capital P because it's going to be invoked as a separate object of its own. And there we go, I'm invoking it. And we get the same effect, but now we no longer have to have that entire big chunk of text in our main file. One of the advantages of that is that we can quickly and easily put multiple penguins in. Each of them can be manipulated as if it were its own item. So we'll throw four penguins in. Give them slightly separate positions, offset from each other. And behold, a mighty tribe of penguins. Well, four. One of the other things we can do with QML3D, which is very similar to QML, is use the inheritance property of animations, which is basically part of the entire structure of the QML language. Here we're encasing all of the penguins in a, an item 3D, and anything we do to that item 3D in terms of transformations or animations will automatically be applied to those child items, in this case our family of penguins. So here I'll apply a transformation, rotating them slightly around the axis there. So now you can see they're slowly offset from the center. And added to that, we'll add an animation. I've only been using sequential number animations here, but the full range of QML animations are available, and I could animate such properties as color and so on. In this case, we're going to be animating the transformation we just made around the vertical axis. So that the penguins, all being well, will move backwards and forwards in sync while they jump up and down and bow to their mighty monkey god. Behold the mighty monkey god, as his followers dance in obeisance to his glory. Kind of makes me wish I was a disembodied monkey head, really. Here's the thing. I have to make a bit of a confession. To make things more interesting, I've slipped in a couple of extra items here, just enough to make things just that touch cooler. Check it out. Monkeys dancing on a pedestal. Okay, in my life, it doesn't get much better than that. But... I think we can still go one better. We can give it a background image. Now this is a classic example of integrating standard QML with QML 3D. In this case we're using QML standard image. And I'm also going to throw some lights on the penguins there just to make it a bit more exciting. So let's check that out. Speed in the jungle, jungle. Rock a tuk 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 a tuk